are you into football or basketball? Did you understand what I asked you? I asked you, what do you like doing? Maybe you've heard this statement from people earlier and it has confused you. What are they asking? What am I into? What does this even mean? So today we are looking at different ways to talk about your interests, what you like doing and what you don't like doing. And we'll talk in terms of degrees. For example, you're just crazy about faith, uh, football and you're just crazy about Facebook. And maybe you're just into something. So like this, we are going to cover different degrees of your interests. So keep watching this session with me. My name is Michelle. Now we are going to look at some very interesting expressions that we have with us on the board. And the first one is what I started the lesson with. This is into. So what are you into? This means that what do you like doing? In other words, if you want me to put it very simply, it means what are you interested in? So into means very interested. So if you like listening to jazz, you could say I'm into jazz, which means that you're very interested in jazz. And sometimes if you really like cooking or if you're very interested in cooking, you could say I got into cooking since I left home. So since you live, uh, started living outside your home, you got into cooking, which means that you started enjoying cooking. Okay, so this is into for you, which means very interested. You could use it with got as well, and you could say, I got into something, etc., etc., etc. Now we look at the next one, and that is mad about. So this is a bit stronger than into. Into is used when you, you're interested in something, very interested for that matter, but you use mad about when you really enjoy something. What's the first thing? that comes to your mind when I say that you really enjoy? Is it football? So if you really enjoy football, you could say, I'm mad about football. This means you really enjoy it. So football is your interest, a very strong interest, and you really enjoy it. So you could say, I'm mad about football. And sometimes you could also say, I'm crazy about football. So this is another way of saying the same thing. Crazy is just another synonym for mad, which means just another word for mad. So you could say they are crazy about football, but I'm mad about basketball. Okay, now with this, we look at the next one. And this is obsessed. Have you ever heard this word before? So obsessed means that you do something to such a degree that you only think about it or maybe you can't stop thinking about it. So do you have any celebrity crush? I mean that any celebrity that you just love and you're crazy about and you just can't stop thinking about the celebrity? Julia Roberts, is that? So if you're really crazy about someone and you can't stop thinking about them, that's called obsession obsession for you. Can't stop thinking. Sometimes obsession is so much that it goes into the crazy territory. What I mean is that you're so obsessed with someone that it actually becomes unhealthy for you. You start becoming anxious and emotionally unstable. So let's say that someday you see your celebrity crush face to face. How would you feel? You'd probably be awestruck, dumbstruck, and you would not be able to say a word. You'll be like, wow, mom. And you will be so emotionally unstable that you'll not know what to say. So it's always good to avoid obsessions. You know, you should not go into that unhealthy territory when you talk about interests. It's okay to be till here, mad about. But if you go up to the obsession, it becomes unhealthy. And what about the next word that we have? Passion. So this is something even greater than obsession. Or is obsession greater than passion? Well, obsession is a bit greater than passion in terms of the unhealthiness attached to it. 
Passion is not unhealthy. Passion is usually usually very healthy, which means that it leads you to do something. It leads you to action for something. For example, back in the older days, passion was used for religious martyrs, which means that people who would die for their religion. But now it has lost that intensity in terms of, you know, dying for religion, but rather it has become dying for your love. So what if you go on a date with a person for the first time and they get on their knees and tell you that they would die for you? They are probably passionate about you or maybe just nuts, which means they might be just crazy. So passion is basically associated with love, but you can also use to talk, talk about your interests using the word passion. For example, you are just crazy about photography, which means that you love doing it, it's really nice and you enjoy it just a lot. So that's when you can use passion, but it's less than obsession and more than mad about. So passion is when you love doing something. To put it in a sentence, you could say that photography is my passion. And for obsessed, you could say she's really obsessed with fashion, which means that she just can't stop thinking about fashion. Or, you know, if you want to use it as a noun, you could also say obsession. And you could say that Losing weight is my obsession. So here you use obsession as a noun and passion. As I told you, photography is my passion or history has always been my passion. Or you could say I'm passionate about cinema. Okay, now with this, we look at the next word that we have. And this word is pronounced as avid. So avid is a person who really likes to do something as much as they can. What about reading? Do you really like reading? Then maybe you like to do it almost all the time. Whenever you get an opportunity, you pick up a newspaper or pick up a book or maybe just scroll through your phone through articles and you start reading because you're an avid reader, which means that you try to do something as much as you can. So a synonym for this would be eager, which means that you just can't wait to do something. Another word that you can use for avid is keen. And if you want to use it in a sentence, you could say, I'm an avid reader, or you could say, I'm a keen cyclist. So this is how you use this word before a noun. Now, avid can have one more meaning, and that is greedy, okay? Avid can also mean greedy. So if someone tells you that you're avid for success, they are not telling you that you're eager for success. They are telling you that you're greedy for success. So according to the context, you have to understand what does avid mean, whether it means eager or it means greedy. Okay, now with that, we look at the next one, lives and breathes. This is a phrase that you can use to talk about your interest. We've already looked at some words, but now we'll look at a phrase. So if you live and breathe something, you give all your time to that thing, okay? Live and breathe means give all your time to it. In real life, you give all your time to living and breathing, but sometimes there are certain things which we almost give, do as if we are breathing. For example, if you really love listening to music and that's what you do all the time, then you could say that, I live and breathe music, okay? Now with this, we look at the next phrase that we have and that is wrapped up. So do you know what is a wrapper? A wrapper is a cover with which you cover a gift. You wrap it. So there is no part of the box that is visible. The same way, when you're wrapped up with something, you only do that thing and you cannot 
think about doing anything else. There are times in our lives when we have so much work to do that we're completely loaded and we don't have time to do anything else, not even pick up a phone call. Those are the times when you're wrapped up with work. And if such is the case, then you could call up, if you, if you get a call from your friend, you could pick up and say, hey, I'm really wrapped up in work right now. Can I get back to you tomorrow? So this means that you can only think about your interest at that time. So when you're wrapped up, you can only think about one thing. The next is write up my street. So when something is just the correct thing for you, you say that it's write up my street. If you love eating and if you love charity and there's an event which has both of these things, you could say that, hey, this event is just write up my street because I love eating and I love raising money for charity. So this means that it's just correct for you. This is how a Britisher would say, write up my street. But if an American had to use the same phrase, he would say, it's right up my alley. Which means same as street in American English. Okay, now we have looked at so many phrases and words to talk about the things that we like. At the same time, there are things that we do not like, which we are not interested in. And those kind of things can be expressed using the word, uh, phrase, not my thing. So if you don't enjoy something and you don't usually do it, it's not your thing. For example, if you don't dance often, you could say, sorry, dance is not my thing. If someone asks you to dance, you could say, sorry, dance is not my thing, which means I don't like it and I usually don't do it. So not my thing means you usually don't do it. An alternative to this would be not my cup of tea. This is a British version of this American phrase, not my thing. And in, Ameri in British English, you'd say not my cup of tea. So if you don't like playing board games, you could say it's sorry, I don't like playing board games. It's just not my cup of tea. Now we have the last one and that is something that leaves you cold. So feeling really cold is not a great feeling. And if something leaves you cold, it actually makes you feel bad after it finishes. Like opera for me. I really don't like opera. I sort of get afraid when I hear do it. Uh, so it leaves me of cold, which means that I feel scared and I don't feel good after listening to opera. So I don't listen to it. So if ever someone invites me to listen to opera, I say that, sorry, it scares me and it leaves me cold. So this expression means that something makes you feel rather worse. Leaves you feeling worse. So the next time someone asks you, what are you into or what's your passion or maybe your obsession? You have various ways to tell them about the things that you're interested in and the things that you're not interested in. So feel free to use these phrases and also leave me a comment if any of these works out for you. And if you liked this lesson, please click the like button and thank you so much for staying with me till now. See you soon in another lesson. Bye-bye.